The final chapter of the first season of The Mandalorian had a surprise appearance by the Darksaber, so now seems like an appropriate time to cover the history of the weapon so far. The Darksaber was a one-of-a-kind lightsaber constructed over a thousand years before the time of the Skywalkers by Tar Vizsla, the first Mandalorian to be allowed into the Jedi Order. He was also the ruler of Mandalore at some point during his life, but when he passed away, the Jedi kept his weapon locked up in the temple on Coruscant. Tar's descendants eventually broke into the temple and stole the Darksaber back, using it to unite their people and defeat any Mandalorians who opposed their rule. From that point forward, the Darksaber became a symbol of power to all of Mandalore. By the time of the Clone Wars, it was still in the hands of House Vizsla, specifically pre vizsla but Mandalore had changed greatly, abandoning the way of the warrior and conqueror in favor of pacifism under the leadership of Duchess Satine Kreis. Pre Vizsla was secretly the head of Death Watch, a Mandalorian extremist group intent on bringing back the old, violent ways of his people. Members of Death Watch happened to rescue a young child named Din Djarin whose planet fell under attack during the Clone Wars. They took him in as a foundling and raised him as one of their own. Vizsla allied himself with a former Sith Lord named Maul, and together they took control of Mandalore from the Duchess. However, Pre betrayed Maul who retaliated by challenging him in single combat. Maul defeated Vizsla and beheaded him, taking control of the Darksaber. Some members of Death Watch remained loyal to the Blade, but others, like Bo-Katan, the sister of Satine, fled. Maul lost many of his forces as the Clone Wars neared its end, and he was eventually kicked off of Mandalore by a joint attack of Republic forces led by Ahsoka Tano and Mandalorians led by Bo-Katan. He fled to his homeworld of Dathomir, where he began a new criminal empire called Crimson Dawn. He kept the Darksaber in a place of honor for 17 years until he met Ezra Bridger and a group of rebels. By that time, Crimson Dawn was no more, or he had lost control of it. He invited the rebels to his hideout, and a Mandalorian member of the crew named Sabine Wren took the Darksaber back. She trained with it under the mentorship of the Jedi Knight Kanan Jarrus and a fellow Mandalorian named Finn Rao. When she was ready, she returned to Mandalorian space to once again unite her people, this time to battle against a growing Imperial occupation. Bo-Katan joined their fight, and Sabine passed the Darksaber on to her, the rightful leader of Mandalore in the wake of Duchess Satine's death. But the Empire did not take kindly to the uprising, and while we don't yet know all of the details, it sounds like the Mandalorians were utterly defeated in what is currently being called the Great Purge. Many Mandalorians lost their lives, and their armor was likely taken to be melted down in Imperial smelters. It was at this time that Bo-Katan probably lost the Darksaber to the Empire, and perhaps Moff Gideon, who was a member of the Imperial Security Bureau during the Purge. He or the Empire kept the weapon for about a decade, at which point Din Djarin was a surviving Mandalorian, working as a bounty hunter in the Outer Rim. He fought against Gideon on the planet Navarro, and that's when the Moff revealed that he held the Mandalorian heirloom. Hopefully, we learn even more of its history in Season 2 of The Mandalorian, which is set to return in Fall 2020. My greatest wish for the show is that it'll give us a look at Bo-Katan Cries in live-action form. I'm a Battlestar Galactica fan and would love to see Katie Sackhoff reprise her role. But that's the complete history of the Darksaber so far. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.